Hello and as always a very very special warm welcome to you and thank you as always for joining me in yet another instalment in this live documentary series that I'm currently doing on social media. So as always thank you so much for joining me and for tuning in and for watching as we're about to embark on our 30th episode. So bearing in mind that we are now at episode 30 and this is the brand new episode that starts or kickstarts series two. So this is episode 30 of series two. Now, thank you as always for joining and for watching me. And uh, for those of you that are watching for the very first time, if you've never watched, if you're watching this live broadcast live right now on Facebook, or if you're watching this on Facebook uh, later today, or whether you're watching this broadcast on uh, YouTube, on our YouTube channel, and you would like to know more, if you like what, if you like what you if you like what you see today and uh, you would like to know more about Influence of the Times, if you'd like to watch more of the episodes that we've done, all 29 episodes, including today's 30th episode, if you'd like to catch up with all the episodes of Influence of the Times and, and have a look at all of the locations and places that Influence of the Times has covered in the series so far, then there are, then there are four easy ways that you can do so. You can simply go to Facebook. If you uh, go on Facebook and simply type in Influence of the Times, so if you search for so if you search, I'm going, to, I'm going to try and get this done because obviously... Okay, so I'm going to come this way. Okay, so hopefully we're not going to cut out too much. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get this done. So for those of you that are watching for the very first time, if you're watching this live broadcast live right now on Facebook, or whether you're watching this on Facebook later today or another time, if you are watching this 30th episode on YouTube and you would like to know more about Influencer Times, if you'd like to know more about Influence Times, what it's all about, and you'd like to catch up with all the episodes you can do in four easy steps. If you go to Facebook and just search Influences of Times, you can join the, fa the Influences of Times Facebook page. And on there will be every single episode, including today's, on there, along with all the photographs and along with all the historical information about each place where possible. Now, if YouTube is, is kind of, easy, I suppose in a way, YouTube is a bit easier because obviously you don't have to scroll through all the posts and all the kind of things on Facebook. So if YouTube is easier for you and you would like to watch all the episodes at your leisure or even just the ones that you like simply go to YouTube and type in Influence of Times subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, the Influence of Times YouTube channel it doesn't cost anything it's absolutely free and you can watch all the episodes from episode one right up until today's at your leisure from the comfort of your own home or wherever you may be either on um, either on your mobile device or on a computer at your leisure and you can pick whichever episodes you like or you can watch all of them now, if uh, blog is your thing, now bearing in mind that our blog is our latest and newest social media outlet. So obviously uh, our blog, um, I'm kind of trying to catch up if you like. So I'm, I'm kind of posting photographs on there um, every so often. Um, so yes, so I'm just trying to focus and concentrate. Um, so if blog is your thing, if you go to influencesoftimes.blogspot.co.uk, you can join our blog and you will be able to uh, find out all about Influence of Times. It will tell you on there about what Influence of Times is all about, how it started, why the, where the idea came from, and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, as I mentioned, the photographs on there are photographs from previous locations that I've visited. So because it's the newest social media outlet, obviously it's a little bit behind all the rest. But don't worry too much, I will be updating the blog every so often. Now bear, bear in mind that I haven't actually updated the blog for probably about a week simply because I've been so busy with other commitments and doing these live episodes. So understandably the blog is a little bit behind but I will be updating it every so often. So every couple of days I'll be putting a new photograph on there and it will t I will put a little kind of description if you like about what each photograph is, where it's from and what it's looking at. And a kind of a little kind of descriptive thing about what I felt, what I felt about that place and that kind of thing. Now, the other thing you can do is you can visit our website. So if you go to www.camdronephotography.co.uk, it's my Cam Drone Photography website page, but on there is a heading called Influence of the Times. Uh, if you click on there, it's a dedicated page purely for this series. And you'll be able to, um, it will open up every single location that I have visited so far in the series, including today's, along with all the photographs and all the information. Now, bearing in mind the live broadcasts aren't on the website because there isn't a way that I can do it, it's quite technical. 
Um, but if you want to just look at the photographs and the historical information about each place, you can do at your leisure. So there's lots of ways. So there's Facebook, YouTube, blog, website. So there's plenty of ways you can keep in touch, keep up to date. Now, I'm really hoping and praying that this signal is going to stay with us. So if it does keep cutting out, just bear with me, okay? You're going to have to bear with me because it might keep cutting off and it's original a couple of times anyway. So just bear with me, but I'm determined I'm going to get this broadcast done today. Now, thank you for, to everybody who's watching. I see lots of people watching. I, I'm trying not to laugh because um, some people are saying some funny things. I'm trying to focus and concentrate. Okay, let me just get my thoughts together. Okay. Before we start, there is something that I would like to do, personally. Whether you're watching this live, or whether you're watching this at a later time today, or whenever you're going to watch this broadcast, or this YouTube uh, video, there is something I'd like to do. First of all, I'd like to apologise to you. Now, you're probably thinking, why am I apologising? Now, I don't, it's not that I feel that I have to apologise, but I would like to. I'm consciously aware of the fact that, obviously, Influence of the Times has been a little bit quiet over the last, say, week or so. And if I'm honest, I, I feel as though I... I've tried to do as much as I can this week. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, obviously, Monday was... Um, we went to Doncaster, which is over 95 miles. And I said this on my last broadcast, but we went to Doncaster to bring you the 30th episode, which is which would have been the start of Series 2. Or should it... Yeah, it would have been Series 2. Um, but unfortunately, we were unable... Well, I was unable to bring you that live broadcast. And obviously, it was a day wasted, really, because I went all the way there for nothing. And so we weren't able to do that broadcast. And obviously I did a broadcast on Wednesday from the absolutely stunning Buildwas Abbey in Shropshire. And obviously that was kind of the backup plan. However, after that broadcast, and sometimes when I do a broadcast, and while it's, it's, different, it's different when um, I'm doing it live, but sometimes when I do a broadcast, sometimes I do feel as though it could have been better. And so I apologise to you if one influence of times has been a bit quiet over the last couple of days, or maybe if I haven't really done much, and secondly, my apologies if maybe, maybe, Wednesday's broadcast at the Abbey wasn't as interesting or as good as it could have been. Now, there was different reasons for that. One being, when you do something like an Abbey, it's very hard sometimes to give you, to make it, it's all very well you looking, but it, I try to make it more interesting by giving you the facts and information about each place. And when you do Abbeys, because they're so old, it's very, very hard to memorise everything but sometimes there isn't a lot of information to give you anywhere. And I just felt that Wednesday's broadcast was kind of a bit hit and miss. I'm not saying that the information I gave you at the time was incorrect. It may have been. But I did try my best and do my best. But what you didn't know was that... Uh, I don't know if you can see on my back. I'm carrying... You can see my drone behind me. I literally carried my drone in the hope to get some aerial photography now because... A lot of abbeys and places like that are covered by the British heritage. They have got a no drone policy, which is fair enough. I didn't take an aerial photography. However, I carried this for over two and a half miles, uh, two and a half, for two and a half hours, all the way from Telford to the abbey, which was something nearly like seven miles. Not only that, um, I'd also hurt my coccyx bone, which is the very tiny bone at the very bottom of your spine, on public transport on Tuesday. Now, I didn't hit it very hard, but I give it a bit of a knock and I've been in absolute agony with it for the last three days and so putting all that together and I was extremely tired by the time I did that broadcast on Wednesday and so I it's all these kind of factors kind of come into it if you like sometimes you have good days and bad days and that's the whole that's just potluck when you do these live broadcasts when you do something like I'm doing like live documentaries some abandoned places you just cannot get to and it's just potluck where you get there and you just can't do anything so I, I just want to apologise, and so I've made an extra special effort to get here today. Now, this broadcast is reaching you quite late in the afternoon, simply because it's taken me ages to get here, but I was absolutely determined to get my drone here, regardless of my back pain, to get here to show you something absolutely completely different, and I'm going to try and make this broadcast as interesting for you as possible, OK? So I just wanted to clarify, well, not clarify, but kind of say that bit first, OK? So... My back is a lot better today, you'll be pleased to know, a lot better today, much better. Nowhere near in a, a, as much pain. You wouldn't think a tiny little bone would cause so much pain, but it's extremely painful. And I've been, uh, all day yesterday, I literally spent all day, in not in bed, but at home, resting, purely because I wanted to get here today and do a really good broadcast for you. So, I'm hoping, guys, this will, broadcast will make up 
for Wednesdays or maybe just the last couple of days or weeks. All right, so I don't, I don't want to waffle on too much, but anyway, so where am we? Okay, well, I'm, I'm holding the tripod because I don't want to put it on the floor in case we lose the signal. I'm going to show you where we am in a minute, but where am I? Okay, I've now brought you, um, just trying to think how many miles. I've probably brought you about 60, hmm, 60 miles? I don't actually know, but a couple of hours away from Birmingham. So I've now brought you north east slightly of Birmingham and we're in Staffordshire. Okay, so we were in Shropshire on Wednesday and we've come all the way back to Birmingham and then we went, we've come to Staffordshire today. I'm actually a couple of miles away from Alton Towers. Okay, so Alton Towers is a couple of miles away from here. Um, a fair few miles and I've brought you to this place and we're near or should I say we're in between two places we're in between Oakamore a small village called Oakamore and another village called or I say village a town called Cheadle I think I think it's how you pronounce it Cheadle or Chaddle Cheadle which is in that direction okay so we're kind of in between the two and I have brought you to an abandoned railway however it's not just a railway because I want you to take a look behind me Ta-da! We have got an abandoned train goods or goods wagon um, yard. Now there is a couple of trains, there's not many, but there is a couple of trains. So we're going to have a look at that train in a minute. And then we're going to walk down the line and we're going to take you down a bit further to where there's some really abandoned and derelict carriages and trains. Now I've taken lots of photographs already today. So all the photographs today will be on Facebook and um, the website. Um, and in time on the blog as well. Now I've got my drone with me, so I'm hoping if we've got enough battery power, I would like to get some aerial shots for you and maybe do a little bit of filming as well. But we'll see how we get on because time is the essence and I need to get back all the way back to Otexeter. I think it's how you pronounce it, Otexeter, to get my train back. So it's, I'm going to try my best. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of historical information. There's not a lot, but then we're going to check out these, these um, wagons, these train carriages. So I, I wanted to do something totally different today. Uh, and this will be the first abandoned trains wagon goods yard that I've ever been to. Um, it's quite impressive, but we'll have a look in a minute. So this line is the abandoned line that runs. It, it actually goes further than Oakamore. So it, there's a tunnel, there's an abandoned tunnel that actually, one end actually comes out in somebody's back garden and it runs beyond Oakamore. And I don't actually know where it goes to. It could go wipe out. Now I don't know this area too well, but you can Google it and find out for yourself. So it goes way past Oakamore, but it runs under Oakamore through this way and it connects. I'm not quite 100% sure. I think it's called the Cheddle Cheadleton Station, which I believe would have been down that end. So if I turn, you can see. So down, down that way. That would have been Cheadleton Station down that way. And that's towards Cheadle that way. Okay. This line, I believe, was used in the 1970s, I believe about the 19, I believe it was like 1977, which is when this line was used. Okay, um, it may have been used before that by previous trains, but I know British Rail in particular used this line around the 1970s, say 1977. And they continued to use it until the quarry, now there's a quarry, just, you can't, you can't see anything, but it's kind of, it's kind of, that way so up there is a quarry and they started obviously to quarry the, um, the stone and things near to this yard and eventually um, British Rail receded if you like uh, uh, and stopped using this line um, they, they stopped using it so much as an actual passenger line and used it more for a, for a goods yards de not depot but a goods yards kind of area where they could store carriages and stuff like that okay now they stopped using this line in 1988. That's when British Rail absolutely stopped using this railway line. It's been abandoned and derelict ever since. So it's been abandoned for, what's that, what, uh, nearly 20 years. I was saying 17 years or so. It's been abandoned and derelict for. And I was hoping there were gonna be a little bit more trains than there am, but there is quite a bit to see. And like I said, we'll go further down the line and there's another stretch. And I'll show you in the carriages and everything. It's quite impressive. There's no engines. Okay, I was really hoping there would be at least one engine that we could go and have a look and the controls and everything, but there isn't an engine here. There used to be, but there isn't anymore. There's only carriages. So that's really all the historical information. And what I will do is I will copy and paste, or I, I will put a more, in, say, in-depth, a more kind of, um, I'll put a better description of the details that I've given you. So I will 
because I tend to kind of look, write it, and then put it on my website. So there'll be a more detailed account of, of the details, if you like, or the historical information about this goods wagon kind of site, if you like. So 1977, British Rail used it, and then stopped using it in 1988, and the quarry has kind of, it's quite close, and, and the quarry vehicles sometimes come down this way, but they kind of tended to use it just to store carriages. Um, but they don't even do that anymore. I mean, these are literally just, that's it, just abandoned and derelict. So that's a little bit of information. It's not a lot to go on. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I've literally just memorized as much as I can in about three minutes, and I've just reeled off the kind of facts. But you're more than welcome to Google um, Okamore Trains Goods Wagon Yard or something I think it's called uh, for yourselves. But I will certainly put the information on Facebook and, you, and uh, the website and things for you either later today or tomorrow or in the next day or two. So thank you for everybody who's watching. Um, I'm trying not to laugh because people are saying some funny, <laughs> saying some funny things. Right, <laughs> okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scroll. You can probably see anyway. I'm gonna scroll you all to one side and then we're gonna go and have a look. All right. Okay, so let me do that. There we go. Okay, let's go and have a look. So these, these are the carriages. Oh, let's go and have a look. Let's go have a look at the first one. This is, and what I'm gonna do, just bear with me. What? Let me let you have a look at the carriage while I just reduce the legs a little bit. Okay, so just bear with me a sec. Okay, we're nearly there. So that's one of the carriages. There we go, let's do that. That's a bit easier for me to, there we go. Okay, so that's one of the carriages. You can see, if I lift the tripod up for you, you can see just how abandoned and derelict it is. You can see it. You can see it right at the other end. I think it's pretty cool because like I've never done anything like this before and it's, it's, I mean, you know, I mean, we, I mean, I use buses and trains and things quite often, but to actually stand next to a train on the floor, you kind of really appreciate the size of them and how big they are. But let's, let's go and check out. Let's go and have a look. Actually, there's quite a bit to see. This carriage is, is, you can see if I walk that way, look, you can see just how abandoned and derelict it is. And, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take you over there because there's some really funny vehicles that I want to show you. Some old British Rail vehicles and they were obviously used to shunt or move small amounts of goods on these lines I would imagine. Look at this, look at this funny little thing. Have a look at that. It's just like an old British, obviously it's British Rail because that's the British Rail sign. But you've got these old kind of like little wagon things and obviously somebody would have sat it's like enough for two people and they would have sat on the line and they obviously would have moved I would imagine like small amounts of goods or wagons on the lines they're like little shunt engine things and there's actually a couple of them the other side there's actually three in a row and I've taken a photograph and hopefully we'll get oh they're actually just over there we'll get down there in a minute but yeah you can see it it's kind of a little shunt thing we've got like a floodlight on the top and one on there but yeah in fact, it's, it's, it actually says something about circuits. So I'm wondering if this was something to do with, like, these were something to do with maintenance, like electrical or maintenance for the, for the rails, for the lines. Like little, um, little fixing things. It's pretty cool. That's well, pretty cool. But have a, look, have a look behind me. So we're going to go and check out that in a minute. We're going all the way down there. And then I'm going to take you further. We're going to walk along the line and take you to the next set of carriages. And uh, I think you'll like them as well. But have a look at all those. You can see it. That's pretty cool. I'm so glad I was able to do this broadcast today. Now, providing the signal doesn't cut off altogether, this broadcast, just to give you an idea, this broadcast could go on for about 45 minutes to an hour. I'll try not to make it too long, but I want to show you everything and make it worth your while as well as mine, because I want to make this as interesting for you as possible. Because I want to make up for the lack of what I've done maybe the last couple of days, I don't know, but I just want you to know that I'm glad I did the Abbey because that was absolutely unbelievably beautiful. That Abbey was something else, I can assure you. It was amazing and to think that they gave me permission to film there, it was just an absolutely incredible place to be. We're going to walk down the other side because I want to show you the other vehicles to the side, but just give you an idea of where we am. So I'm going to, we've kind of, we've got to walk down there Okay, so I'm going to walk this way. 
and I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you. I'll, we'll, we'll go past these bushes, and then um, I'll let you have a look inside the, the carriage. Oh. Oh. There we go. So, so here, yeah, look, have a look. See what I mean about these vehicles? There's one there. You've got three lined up. And they're like maintenance -y things. So these might be the carriages, but then this one's like the engine thing. <laughs> Look at that. Mm. Somehow I don't think that works anymore. But yeah, you've got like all the circuitry stuff on the top there. Look. So these are obviously to do with the electrical side of the railway lines. <laughs> shall, I try, shall I drive home in it? Shall I see how long it takes me to get all the way back to Birmingham? It's going to take me a long time. But there's that carriage. How cool is that? It's, it's amazing. It's like the, su the size of these things. Like, tell you what I'm going to do. Look, guys, I'm going to hold you underneath so you can see for yourself. So obviously, this might be back to front or something on you, but have a look under there. That's pretty cool. It's not very often you get a chance to do this. But that is amazing. Have a look in there. Have a look in there. Look. It's pretty cool. And then we've got all these wagons behind us. So let's go and have a look. Let's go and check out some more wagons. Ow, and I got scratched on my ankle. Right. <laughs> I'm trying not to be too silly. <laughs> Sorry. This one is like... So this one's an army. If I Back to front, I know. <laughs> I know that says Yimru there. That actually says army. So this wasn't this is an actual army carriage and on it are like um they're not sleepers or anything, they're like great big metal frames for something, I don't know what. But this is quite fresh. But you can see it's quite still quite oily. You see it says oil on there. But yeah, have a look at that. Massive thing. To do it that way, like as you can see, there you go. So, there's the carriage that we were looking at right at the end, and then you've got this enormous army carriage right here. And then you've got these, like, now I remember these when I lived in Scotland. I remember seeing these old wooden carriages, and they used to carry. I don't, I always used to wonder what they looked like inside or what they carried because they were always just made of wood. But here's one here, and we'll have a look inside it. There's nothing to see, but I'll let you have a look in it. And one of the things. That I do like, like already today since I've been here, there's just that smell. Sometimes when you come to abandoned places, a lot of places don't have a smell, and some places do. And when you you notice it more when there is a smell, and sometimes that smell can remind you of something. This being here around these trains, the smell of the oil and the wood just takes me all the way back to my childhood, all the way back to Scotland, all the way to when the um, coal train used to come up every Sunday. It used to pass our where we lived, and it used to back up into the old. Uh, well, it's not say old; it's still there. Tate and Lyle Sugar Factory in um, Greenock, and that's what it reminds me of. That smell just takes me back to that when I was tiny, and I always used to remember seeing that little engine and all the carriages of coal being backed up into the Tate and Lyle factory, ready to. That's what they used to burn for the for the sugar. But that's what it reminds me of. So anyway, let me let me give you a look, so that you can see inside. It's just completely worn out. I think it's fascinating. I think it's great. I'm so glad I come here today. I've taken some. I was going to say some really good shots, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to like brag. But I've taken some good photographs. Hopefully, you'll find them interesting. Look at these. I've always wanted to know what it's like to be next to these things, big hoppers that carry the gravel. These often you find going into things like. Um, uh, it's like um, I think of things like cement, like big cement plants and, and uh, power, what they call them, like steel works places. You always see the freight trains with these, and these are massive. Let's go and have a look inside. Well, let's go, let's go up there. Oh, oh, oh dearie me. Oh, so there you can see. Have a, oh, have a look at there. You go, look, that's inside it. So you can see the gaps in the middle is where. They could release the gravel and the contents onto the floor. 
if they wanted to, I suppose. But that's what's inside them. And these are like the great big, these are the big like handbrake wheels that are still here. These massive great big wheels. In fact, look, it still turns. And it turns, I don't know if you can see, there's a, I don't know if you there, look. So it turns that in the middle. So obviously that controls the opening at the bottom there. They're like three big like brake wheels. It's just absolutely crazy. So let's um let's I'm not gonna jump down, but let's climb. Oops, got snagged. Oh hang on. Oh, oh got snagged. Sorry guys, got snags. We got snagged in the train. Alright, let's get down. Oh, oh man. <laughs> right. Okay. So there we go. Massive. Look at these things here, like the suspension. Imagine having them in your car. <laughs> Imagine having them in your car on wheels like that. <laughs> it wouldn't be very comfortable, would it? Ooh. Right. Let's walk down here. Let's walk down here a bit more. So there, so there you can see. Some massive, great big hoppers. And we are going to go down there and have a look. And then we're going to go and look at the next train. So, yeah, so it's kind of like there's about one, we've got one two, three. We've got, so we've got four like hoppers, if you like. Hoppers. We've got four hoppers. But, oh, God, these things are huge. Ma look. Massive. It's not, until you, like, it's not until you walk past one or go near it, you appreciate how big they are. They're huge. I mean, we all know they're big anyway, but it's not until you're right next to it, because obviously we never get this close to them. But to think that these are just left here. Just left. But you can see how already some of the st stones and contents, and if I show you under this one here, look. So the contents in that one's already been dispersed. It's already been, whether somebody's done it maliciously or I don't know, but you can see how all the stuff that was in it has already come out the bottom. I could have just been through time, I suppose. Influence of time. <laughs> it's just come out the bomb. So, there we go. So that's that's kind of that one. And then if we go across the line, you can see how it's a bit squidgy here. We've just got a load of like, um, can you see them? Oh, there you go. They are just all chassis. So they're just like um, a whole line of chassis of what's left of carriages. They're even more abandoned and derelict than them ones. <laughs> but they're just wheels, they're just frames, like almost like a chassis, like a car. But yeah, so that's your first set of carriages. It's just, I just think it's, I think it's great. I'm so glad I got here today. So glad I got here today. So give you a nice. Right. Okay, should we go and have a look at the next carriages? Let's go and have a look at the next ones. It's, a, it's about a two minute walk. So, you're just gonna have to look at me. All right, sorry about that. But that's the way it's gotta be. Because <laughs> I've gotta see where I'm going and it's quite mucky down here and it gets quite squidgy. Shall I give you one last look? There you go. Oh, I'm only joking. So, you can see them just down there, look. And then we've got this like a, uh, almost like what's left of carriage there as well. So we're gonna go across this as like a, Almost like a little level crossing. I should show you. Yep. A little level crossing. I'm going to walk on here. That's it. Okay, so let's go and check out the next carriages. Because they're pretty cool as well. Da, 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 da. So I'm just walking along the railway line. Just so you can, as you can see. And we're going to go down there. So you can just make out the carriages at the end there. So we're going, we're going to check him out and have a look. And I'm going to get you in there and you can have a look. You can see for yourselves just what it's like. Right, we can come up here. That's it. This is, there's like a point. You know, you know where the railway line changes direction? This is the point. This is the handle. And you pull it. And the railway line doesn't even move. <laughs> no, seriously. I don't know how on earth... I just, the, I mean, it does. It does actually move. I haven't got the strength to do it. I don't know how on earth men man. 
<laughs> do you want to see me do it? <laughs> it's not even budging, it's just it's just shaking. Right. Okay, we won't do it then. <laughs> it's so hard, I don't know how on earth men actually manage to do it. I just, I ain't got the strength. It's so hard. Right. Let's go down here to the next set of carriages. And then, uh, see where we go from there. So hopefully you're finding this interesting. I know it's a bit silly, but I guess I'm just trying to, I don't know, just make it a little bit more entertaining, if you like. <laughs> well, it's either that or you just got to look at me, so I might as well do something. <laughs> right, this is where it gets a bit squidgy. It's just where it gets squidgy, folks. So we've got to walk on a railway line. And this is where I've got to focus and concentrate. Right. <laughs> Shall I show you what I'm about to do? Right. I have literally... So that's... Whoop, that's where we've come from. We have got to walk on that line all the way to that carriage, through that grass. So don't make me laugh, otherwise I'm going to fall in the water. It's literally just water. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to focus and concentrate with you in my hand. So just bear with me. I just don't want wet feet. Okay. Do you want to have a look? No. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to avoid. I really don't want to go in there because it's boggy, mucky, stinky. <laughs> okay. Oh, nearly. I'm trying so hard just to focus. I'm so glad I can't hear what you're saying because you would just put me off and I would end up falling in. That would be it. Do you want, do you want to have a look? Okay, do you want to have a look? See? <laughs> We've got a little bit more to go. Yep, let's do it. I can do it. I can do it. Oh, I just don't want to fall in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. We're almost, oh no, I've got some more, more. I bet you're all saying, go on, do it, go on, fall in. You would love to see me fall in, wouldn't you? You really would. I know it, I can, I can tell, I can hear you from here. Oh, nearly. <laughs> I managed to put my foot in the only tiny little patch of dry grass there was. I can literally feel you lot pushing me in. I can, I can just, I know it. You're dying for me to just fall in. Okay, we're nearly there. Oh, that was close. Okay. We made it. That's... See? Okay. Let's go to the next lot. That's it. I'm on a mission now. Okay. Seriously. <laughs> okay, so this is the next lot of carriages. Okay, so I'm just going to show you. I'm going to spin it around so you can see. There we go. And it goes all the way down. Oop, wrong way. That, that way. So it's quite a long line of carriages, but I'll give you a good look at every one, as you can see. And then we'll finish broadcasting. If I've got enough time, I'm going to do some aero photography. I'm going to get my drone, do some aero photography, get a little bit of filming done. Job done. Sorted geezer. Right. So this is this is the next one. So we're going to have a look at these. Right, so these are these are even more abandoned and derelict. So they've got. We've got this carriage here, which is just an open one. It's a little bit like the army one, but obviously it's a lot older. Um, and it's got rings, so obviously this would have held, you know, you've got like the straps that go over the top. And in fact, there's actually a railway line. What's up, if I show you? Have a look. Oop, almost, you can see it. So it's actually carrying a railway line. And that would have been strapped down. Not that it's gonna go anywhere, can you imagine that? I'm sure a gust of wind probably wouldn't take that away. <laughs> but anyway, health and safety and all that, eh? Okay. So that, that's what's on there. So you can see a whole piece of railway line is on there. So that's just like a, a flat one. These are obviously like... I don't know anything about railway. I don't want to bore you, but I would imagine what, these are like serial numbers. These would have been serial numbers for each carriage. I suppose each one had a different number. Um, but yeah, and you've still got this. Can you see the sign? There, look. But yeah, look at these things, like the buffers. And you've got like the wheels, it's all there. Look at the size of them. Massive wheels. Oh, 
it's just it is amazing to look at it, it really is i'm just so glad i was able to come here today and, and show you and you've got like the spring and this, this one's literally just an opened an open carriage I don't, I don't know what this would have been used for i guess again it could have been used for carrying sections of railway line or the um what do you call them what's the word i'm thinking of Arr, the um sleepers that's what i was trying to think of so maybe the sleepers or something but it's just one big massive open carriage i mean it's you can see it's long on the camera it is long and we're not even at the end the end is here so this is the end Zzz. that is how big it is actually show you take you up massive absolutely enormous look at it huge crazy now then have a look at this pretty cool Hanley and Stafford so Hanley is another village or town I think it's the opposite way of Oakenmore I think so I know Hanley's around in some way but that's what well, that says Hanley and Staffordshire on there that's, that is really cool and uh, I wonder if I can do it okay, just bear with me that's it okay just want to bring it up here so you can see other people have been here too there you go and there's actually some stickers from hell on earth now if you don't know who hell on earth am go onto youtube type in hell on earth they are brilliant urban photographers or brilliant urban explorers they will put me to shame if i'm honest they really do some of the places they've been to are absolutely fascinating so please watch hell on earth and if you're watching hell on earth thumbs up so um and they were actually here just the other day i didn't actually know that they were here tuesday i believe tuesday i think it was tuesday or wednesday they were here and they actually came to this very place so i don't usually do things like this trust me i don't usually climb but i just wanted to give you an idea of what we're looking at so we're standing on top of this oil tank and that lid opens i'm not going to open it because it's extremely heavy and i don't want to hurt myself or try and do everything you know with you in my hand but you can just see how big so you've got that carriage with a bit of line on the top that one and then this one here and you've got the hatch in there is just like segmented sections it's like little separate tanks if you like they're not enclosed they're just little they're like partitioned bits inside so obviously the oil i don't know i don't know how it works but this would have been filled with oil but have a look behind me well, this is what we're going to have a look at in a minute there you go so all them carriages i'm not going to take you right back up that way because there's a couple of um i've taken some photographs there's a couple of really old wooden carriages and they've still got intercity doors in them and one of them's got first like for first class um there's some old uh, lights up there but i've taken photographs well, i'm not going to take it up there because it was just take too long um, but I've taken photographs, but that's to give you an idea of what's back up the top there towards it looks like an old, sh not a shed, but more like a kind of like a bricked warehouse but you can't see in it or look in it but by there are some wooden carriages with some really old seats and doors uh, glass panels for the windows and doors that have never been used that have still got the cardboard to protect the corners they're all stacked up on shelves fascinating, absolutely fascinating to think that it's intercity doors are up there and stuff but that's the train No problem honestly it's, it's fine so i'm just going to be really careful okay so just bear with me guys okay just bear with me because obviously i want to do this carefully but i just wanted to bring you up here so you could see okay I'm just taking it nice and slow there we go that's it let's climb back down the side but you can get an idea that it's pretty cool so it's not very often you get this close to a train and especially not goods wagons anyway okay so we're almost down okay nice and gently stand on there there we go we're down okay 
That was a one-off. Trust me, guys. I don't often do that, but that was a one-off. I just wanted to show you. So there's the carriage there. Uh, have a look. See this carriage here, look. Look, in, look at that. Um, I don't... It's not easy, this side. I was going to say, I climbed up the other end. I wonder if I can show you inside it. It's literally just nothing. But I wonder if I can... Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, rather than climb up, let me hold my battery pack and I'll try and pop you through the window with the door so you can see. So see, see if you can see anything. You might not be able to. I don't think it's going to work, is it? Oh, no. What about... There, look. Can you see anything? Oh, there you go, look. So it kind of gave you an idea, didn't it? But I did take a photograph in there earlier today of actually inside it. So you've got like circuitry bits on the side there. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So that's that's the carriage. Massive big long carriage. Absolutely crazy. So you can see it there, look. But yeah, I did um I took a picture looking straight in there. But I I don't want to climb too much because obviously it's a bit difficult with a tripod. I suppose if I just had my phone I'd do it, but and then we've got this great big thing here, look, which is carrying an entire chassis and a boiler. Now that's a boiler on the end now. Obviously that's from a steam train, don't know what steam train, but it, it looks to me like a boiler. And it's huge, and it's incredible to think that this is solid, solid steel, and this carriage is carrying it. But you can see how it's, see it? So that's the boiler, and that would have been, I would imagine, at the front of the train, so that's covered by all the bodywork. Just unbelievable. And it's sat on this carriage, and you've got a big chassis there as well. Let's take you up here. It's just unbelievable. I mean, that's how I know it's a boiler. See it? It's just massive. And I've taken a picture through one of them holes. So you can see what's inside. But yeah, huge boiler. Steam train boiler. And then we've got... See? <laughs> them again. So we've got this carriage. Let's go and have a look. I'll show you some more. And what I do is I walk around the other side and I might be able to show you a bit more the other side. So we've got this huge carriage look. It's just draped in sheeting and stuff. So you can see it. It's like just a big massive carriage. And we've got another one here. So it says not not to be loose shunted, I think that's what it says might be not to be loose shunted but yeah it's like an old carriage and it's carrying this thing in here it's like a big engine or something it's just massive yeah, it's huge just gonna have a look at the rest I'll walk around the front and then we'll go around the other side and I'll see if I can give you a little look inside let's pop here we go let's pop let's pop you in here so you can have a little look this is inside a carriage we just grab my battery pack and then you, you don't get so have a look in there look. let's see so it's just completely empty let's give it a little way give it a look in there so I'm hoping Hoping you got to see something. I think, yeah, it's just, that's mad. Look at the doors, look. Really are doors. Oh, it's fascinating. Obviously we've got like graffiti and stuff. Anyway, people have been down and graffitied it. There's like the British Rail sign. But it's just amazing. Hopefully I'll get some really good aerial photography done in a little while. I'll just take a couple of pictures. But yeah, this is just crazy. And in there, look, we've got massive, like, engines. I, tell you, I actually went in there, took some photographs.
but I'll go around the other side and I'll see if I can climb up and just let you have a look. And then we've got this last carriage here, just parked. And it's literally just in the middle of nowhere. If I show you, if I give you a look. So we're literally just in the Staffordshire Country Ride and this is parked in the middle of nowhere. Just literally in the middle of nowhere. Okay, let's have a look down here. Let's go down this side. So, look, see that? It says Santa's Grotto on the door. But yeah, mad. But these, I, I, I'll show you. I'll just let you have a look. There's like massive engines. We just grab the battery pack again, so I can just show you it inside. Have a look in there, look. That massive, great big... Oh, where are you? Just trying to... Oh, no, wrong way. Ah, there you go. As you can see, what it's like in there. Let's give you another look. This is like great big engines and stuff. There. It's absolutely mad. So, walk down a bit further and then we'll finish the broadcast because I want to try and, um, I don't want to keep you too long. I don't want to make this boring because there's only so much you can kind of see really. Um, and hopefully I'll get some aerial pictures done before I go. But hopefully you're finding this interesting. Let's just walk down this side here. And then, uh, have another look. So you can just see the train behind me. And then there's that big generator thing. Look. It's like a big generator. Do you want to have a look in there? Stick your head, stick your head in there, folks. Oh look. So you can see it. There's that big generator thing. And if I spin you around the other way. You see? fire extinguishers but yeah that's just like it's just it's like a big i don't know like a big motor or something for something like cargo or i don't know it could be for anything and then i'll show you i'll show you in here like, let me pop your head in this one i'll just show you inside this one here like so you can have a look i'll look in there See, it's just totally abandoned and derelict. Um, I'll try and show you into the last carriage if I can, and then we'll finish. Because I'm sure we've probably been probably been on air for about 45 minutes, maybe. Um, and there's not really much else I can show you, but just to give you another look, there's that massive boiler again. And what I want to do is just see if I can pop your head into this last one down here before we finish. Let's have, let's have a look ski. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if I can actually. Okay, maybe I can pop your head through the window. Just have a look. See if you, see if you can have a look. Sorry, just trying to get the legs so you can have a look. Have a look in there. See what's in there. It's just, it's just like plastic and bits of wood and stuff, really. So that's that's kind of the trains, really. There's obviously that set down there, and this set up here. That's pretty much it. Um, over the years, obviously the the wagons and things have changed. Judging by some of the photographs that people have taken, at one point there was a lot more. Um, but they've obviously taken a lot of them away and things, but this is what's left. But I just thought this would make an interesting and a very different broadcast to all the rest. Because obviously we do like factories and I take it to, it's mainly like factories and stuff like that. But I thought this would make a really nice change for you to have a look around an abandoned yeah. and derelict train or goods, goods wagons. So, yeah, 
So that, that's kind of it, guys. That's, that's the end of the broadcast. Hopefully you found this interesting. I'm hoping that with a little bit of humour in there as well. Um, I think I'm always a little bit too afraid to be too silly because I don't want to, you know, um, I don't like to be serious all the time. I do like to add a little bit of humour. And the more I'm doing these broadcasts, the more comfortable I feel doing them. Um, but, um, yeah, it was nice to just put a little bit of humour in there. And hopefully you found this interesting anyway. Hopefully you enjoyed having a look around this abandoned goods wagon thing with me. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant being here today. I'm really hoping I've got enough power just to do some quick aerial photography and maybe a little bit of filming. Um, and then I'm going to head off. So, as always, thank you so much for tuning in, for watching, for taking time out of your day, out of this Friday, to watch me in of times as we continue to go and search Britain's most abandoned and derelict places. It's been a joy, a pleasure, as always, to have your company. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, for letting me show you around this abandoned train. And, um, yeah, so hopefully, uh, I don't know, I'm not quite sure. I've only got a couple more days off work and then I have to go back to work. So I'm not quite sure when the next broadcast will be or where from, I'm not sure. However, I have actually got an idea. Actually, today on the train to get here, I found somewhere else. And it's, again, it's something we haven't done before. Now, there's not, there's a, there's a bit to see. Most of the site has gone, but they've left some things behind. And I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it for you. But that's going to be our next broadcast, hopefully. So within the next couple of days, so sometime before Monday, if not, it will be during my next couple of days off or day or two off together we will do our next broadcast which will be episode 31 of series 2 so thank you for joining me for episode 30 of series 2 and um, yeah everything about today will be on Facebook and YouTube and things and the website in the next couple of days so join me for episode 31 of series 2 coming your way very soon right here live on Facebook uh, on YouTube and all the other social media outlets so hopefully you will join me and come back and uh, come with me to our next location. And uh, that I'm definitely going to do some aerial photography because they're pretty high is all I'm going to say. Very high. And it would be amazing to get some nice aerial shots just for you. So um, hopefully you join me for that. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to quickly do some aerial stuff and then I'm going to head off and make my way back to Birmingham. So until then, God bless, take care. Thank you so much for your company, guys. You've been an absolute joy and a pleasure, as always. And uh, join me for the next episode, coming your way very soon, live on here, on Facebook. And uh, until then, bye for now. Take care. God bless. Bye for now.